I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freud, and this is The Next Page. Marissa, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm I'm great. I'm just a little tired. I was where you were yesterday and the day before. Mm. Today I'm feeling a little more energized. So it can't be the weather if you're energized, more energized. I think it's just, wow. It's been, so as we record this, it's a Wednesday. I think, I know why I'm tired. Because I really didn't get a weekend. Because oh, I was yeah. doing my Maxwell certification training. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's why I'm tired. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. It was like, it was so inspiring. Yeah. I'm so excited about Live to Lead. Um you know, I think we're going to have to, I'm going to have to put a link in the description for Live to Lead or just email mm-hmm. us. Live to Lead is going to be amazing this year. Um, it's it's all virtual. So, and it's a great deal for our listeners if they work through through me or through Mac and to register. It's awesome. So, so that's why I'm tired. I, I, yeah, I, that makes a lot of sense. You have been going for about two, almost two weeks now without. Yeah. So I, I mm-hmm. need, I need some time off, but I'm going to take some time off. So tomorrow I'm. Tomorrow I'm taking time off, and Friday I'm mm-hmm. taking time off, and then we have a long Monday's weekend, a holiday, yeah. For us, yeah, because we're always a day ahead of everybody, or a week ahead, so, week or a week behind, rather. Mm-hmm. We're recording a week before, yeah, thank you. See how tired I am? <laughs> wow, this, this might be really short tonight. <laughs> so, this is part three of our summertime lessons. Mm-hmm. It's always an inside job. Now, I, te- I did a teaser last week. Yep. Because I think I told, I just said it's an inside job. So yep. what were your thoughts when you heard that potential title? Didn't really have any. Um, you know, I thought, okay, this is going to be something that's going to cause some reflection, some self-reflection. Mm-hmm. But I um, yep. wasn't sure exactly where you're going with it. Okay. And that's fair. So I'm going back to my my uh, book, the Joe Torrey's book, The Yankee Years. Mm-hmm. and. And I highlight this in, in the email that went out this morning. You know, Joe Torre, I think, was was one of the best managers that to ever manage baseball. And I know that that is a, whoa, that's like, like this huge statement. But, but I really think he was. Um, and, and my reason for saying that was that he quickly was able to build tremendous trust with his team and with the fans and with management. And then he, that what with trust comes commitment. And he achieved amazing things. I mean, we're talking about four world series championships, you know, in, 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 in one, the first seven years, he had four world series championships, two American league pennants. I mean, and, and he never, he was in the playoffs every year that he was a manager, which is incredible. But his best managing was done after they were done winning championships because he was having to manage in a time when there was less and less and less trust. Mm -hmm. And when the the organization was beginning to, I think, spiral out of control, where there were different voices saying different things to different people. And and Joe Torre was, was struggling to, how do I lead? How do I manage in a time when I don't have the say that I once had? when I can't pick up the phone and talk to the owner to, to reassure him. And it literally, so if we think about it, the Yankees who are still one of these storied franchises is probably, it might be the most valuable sports team in the world. I'm thinking that's just a guess. I don't know that for sure. Um, During the Tory years, I mean, they they went from being, you know, a million dollars, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, but still million. Their value of the organization when Tory got there was in the millions. When Tory left, it was in the billions. Wow. So, you know, just their ticket sales. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's it's incredible what the New York Yankee brand became primarily under. I mean, it was always a great brand you know, um, throughout its history. They've won more World Series than any other baseball team. None of them even come close to winning as many as the Yankees won. But Joe Torre was amazing. And then his leadership at the end, I think, was even the most amazing. So the, the, the only way to take the Yankees out wasn't to beat them on the diamond. It was to have them come apart internally. And then once they came apart internally, the... um they were beaten on the field 
if that makes sense. People figured out how to beat them. People were able to beat them on the field because they were beating themselves internally. It's always an inside job. And the lesson from that is it's the same with any of our organizations. Organizations don't fail because of competition. They fail because something happened internally which caused them to not be able to react to competition. So when we're looking at how do we secure our future, look internally. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and then it got me to this thing. So what, what, what happened to Detroit? Well, trust was lost. Why was trust lost? Because there was a character issue within the organization. Joe Torrey was the same. He was, he communicated the same, he, you know, but within the organization, there was a character flaw within the senior leadership as, as George Steinbrenner. Now this is my assessment, nobody else's. When George Steinbrenner was failing in health, there was a, there was a group of, I don't know, maybe six people that were making decisions. They weren't making decisions built on trust. There was, there were conversations behind closed doors about other people kind of things. And I think that, so to me, that was the beginning of this, this erosion of trust. But here was an interesting thing that I found fascinating. At the end, Joe Torre still had the trust of the bulk of the players and he still had the trust of the fans, but he still lost his job. And, and I know there's a comment in the book so in Joe Torrey's last, so what the, what the organization would do is they would leak information to the media to put pressure on Joe Torrey that he'd have to win, have to win, have to win. And again, he, he went to the playoffs every single year, even though he had, I, I was venting one day at home talking to my boys and I said, you know, you know, I, I can't believe it. They gave him this beat up old Buick and told him to go win world series championships. You know, you can only drive an old beat up Buick so far and, I think my family was tired of me getting so emotional about the, the breakdown of the team, so to speak. But, but in the last, and I mentioned, I mentioned this in, in my email, in the last game that Joe Torre ever managed, the fans at Yankee Stadium started chanting his name, Joe Torre, Joe Torre. And one of those men behind the curtain, so to speak, was in another broadcast booth or in another, in a luxury box watching the game and when he heard that knowing that they didn't want him back he let loose with an expletive like basically we are in trouble here Mm -hmm. because we could lose our fans Mm -hmm. so but it was an inside job so now let's make it real to us you know as an individual where's my character there's a there was a book um a Harvard Medical School psychologist, uh, I think his name is Stephen Berglass, wrote a book called The Success Syndrome. And he said, people who achieve great heights but lack bedrock character are destined for one or more of what he calls the four A's. Arrogance, aloneness, destructive adventure seeking, and he even added adultery as the fourth one. So basically what that's saying is that unless a person has bedrock character, They can't handle success. Mm -hmm. So then we got to ask ourselves, so how do we know where our character is? You know, because leaders have to be bigger on the inside than they do on the outside. It's just that simple. And and, and if you think about it, leadership is never supposed to be about the leader. It's always about the team. That's a character thing. Um, It's much more than talk. It's how we live. We don't talk about character. We live character. And talent's a gift, but character's a choice. Whenever I do my classes on on identifying your strengths and developing your strengths, I always put a caveat in. If your weakness is character, that's a choice. That's not a giftedness. We choose to be people of character. So then somebody says, so what, what do I need to do? You need to look for cracks. Just look for cracks in your character. You know, what's a crack? Um, when I might... When I might take something that's only partially true and state it as a truth, do I spin things to get my own advantage? That's a character problem. Mm-hmm. Um, 
do I do I confront reality or do I walk away from it and deny it and make it like it's not real? Um, and then, so for myself, you know, do I have cracks? Am I am I completely honest and transparent in my relationships with people? Not transparent in a way that I mean, but transparent in a way that I would always address an issue, rather than just saying, "Well, it's not that big of a deal." No, it might be. Um, somebody one I had a I had a coaching call with a client, and we were talking about an employee that that needed to have some performance issues addressed. And they said, well, you know, I just, I like my people. And I, and, and my point is, if you really like and value your people, you will address challenges that they have. You don't just sweep it under the rug until it gets so bad, you get rid of them. Mm-hmm. Cause that's not, so that's a character issue. Um, and then I thought we might need to look and see with our organizations. Does our organization have some character cracks? You know, are we holding everyone to the same standards that we need to? Um, those kind of things. Because if we come apart, it's going to be, it's always an inside job. The same thing happens. So I was, and I was, as I was reflecting on this, and I actually put it in my, in my post, it's the same thing that happens in a country. You know, if we look at, if we look at the the struggles that our country's going through right now, it's a character problem. It's an inside job. The Roman Empire was not conquered by opposing armies. It came apart from the inside out. So that should all make us think, are we, you know, are we are we living values? Are we teaching values? Are we um, you know, values when I talk about values, valuing people appreciating people for their giftedness, making people, working on making people better. You know, what was it? Um, my grandma used to say, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. <laughs> Those kind of things. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I have to say, my grandma lived that. Cause at her funeral, the pastor that had her service said in all of my years of knowing this woman, I never heard her say an unkind word about anyone like wow that's pretty amazing yeah wow but that was her that she Mm -hmm. was that person of character so i know this sounds kind of heavy and i even said to you before we started it's probably going to be a really short podcast but i think it's something we all need to think about Mm -hmm. i think it's it's a a choice it's a good reminder and i think now is a good time i mean you know it falls great into our summertime lessons but if you think even even broader than summer um the last several months have mm-hmm. been uh what feels like hyperspeed yes in some ways i mean in some ways it felt really slow but in many ways i think it felt like hyperspeed trying to just stay afloat i mean for for a lot of businesses they've been re potentially reinventing themselves or right. at least reimagining the way that that they function and revising mm-hmm. the way that their um facility is run and in order to you know keep everyone safe and keep the business open um and now i think you know we're kind of ready to start thinking like okay we've moved out of that crisis mode yes or at least part of the way out and it's like okay it's time to really look now and and get get the house in order right like okay we're, we're, we're getting our operations in order we're and now it's time to to reflect and say like okay both as an organization as a leader as as a person um you know where where does my character stand and um And how is it impacting the relationships I have with the people I work with, the people I yes. lead, the person I report to? Um, you know, it really is important. And I think that reflection can be hard, but I think, um, you know, it's not something you're going to sit down and like assess in, in one sitting. But I think um, if you keep that in the back of your mind as you go about like the span of a week. Right. You're able to kind of see where those cracks are. And I think sometimes too, um, we we can see those cracks in others. Mm. It, 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 but but it's really a reflection of a crack that's within us. I think I've talked mm-hmm. about this before and how sometimes the things that we are most critical of others for are really insecurities of our own. And um I think 
that kind of works in that character field too. Like I, I, you know, yes. like for, for myself, I, I've done that, right? Like I've, I've sat in a meeting and thought like this person talks too much and doesn't listen enough. And then when I reflect on that, I'm like, wait, no, that's me. Like I'm yeah. talking too much and I'm not listening enough sure. and I need to address that with myself. Um, and so I, I, think especially you know like we're going into back to school which is going to look different um mm -hmm. this year but i think there's always that like fresh start associated with this time of year like okay the routines are coming back in place even though they're going to be different routines this year um the training mindset shift usually occurs this time of year. We, we see that right. all the time at MACNI. We see our members kind of um, ease back into their their training and development plans. And um, so I think this is really timely. And it just happens to fall within um, when you're reading this book <laughs> that we're all getting yeah. your summertime lessons. Those are some great points. And I and I. I, I want to piggyback on something you said, you know, that sometimes it's not e it's easier for us to see this in others. And maybe that's an indication that it's something we struggle with. The other thing would be that we should ask somebody who's a really trusted person in our inner circle. Do you see a character issue in me? Mm -hmm. Do you see a crack that's there? You know, when when you um, when you when you have a foundation, you want to repair the cracks in the foundation, because if you don't over time, other things get in there and open the crack up. Mm -hmm. water, things like that, you know, penetrate into it. So the goal is to identify those things early so that we can address them. And the good news is you can rebuild it. You can just correct it. And then once we correct the character problem, once we get that back on track, we can build the trust back up. It takes time and people can go back. We did some podcasts on the speed of trust. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can rebuild trust that's been broken. But once your character's back on, on a solid footing, the organization will get back on a solid footing. The family will get back on a solid footing. The community will get back on a solid footing. The country will get back on a solid footing. And then we can begin to achieve our purpose. Mm -hmm. Why we were created and put here in the first place. So it's not a somber thing. It's actually a positive thing. I think I interrupted you. No, 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 not at all. Okay. Yeah, because I don't want people to think this is this is super negative. It's not. No, it's hey. it's really about like kind of I think we it's almost like we skipped this step, right? Like we talked mm -hmm. about trust and it like but it, this is the found like you said, this is the foundation. It is. Yep. And it was, you know, if you think about the way the book goes, it was kind of like this was the downfall. So Right. We can learn from that and right. get ahead of the curve. You know, and I'm and I, you know, I'm I'm still a Yankee fan. That you know, <laughs> since Joe Torre, they did win one World Series under Joe Girardi. Now they have a new manager. Mm -hmm. I sense similar issues that they're struggling with, but I'm hopeful that they can sort those things out, get the trust, you know, bag trust bandwagon built back up, and the you know the character piece, um, and win again. But time will tell. I'm going to have to start watching more baseball. Well, it's, you know, I, I love baseball, but I will tell you, if you really want a good nap, watch a baseball game. Because, and this is interesting, too. I actually commented on this to my wife last night. There are no fans in the stands. Mm -hmm. So I used to get so annoyed with so much crowd noise that I couldn't hear the announcers call the game. But it's last night I was list, I was actually watching the Yankee game. They they were playing the the. Tampa Bay Rays and they actually beat them which is amazing um the Yankees won actually and I heard crickets in the stadium it was like wow that is so cool mm -hmm. I can you can hear the snap of the bat you can mm -hmm. hear the ball hit the glove but I know that it's really hard for a lot of these organizations because there's no there's no gate revenue right from ticket sales or any hot dogs or anything being sold but yeah just watch baseball it's a, it's a fascinating it's a mm -hmm. very complex game when you I, understand what all goes into how they play the game. I've always been like the type of fan that just watches, you know, like the, the world series or, right. You know, um, 
And it drives my dad nuts because I'm always like, what's this? What's that mean? What's this mean? <laughs> so I right. guess now's my chance if, you know, if I have a little spare time in the evenings, I should. Yeah. Uh, and just to know, like, it's interesting. So I, I also, I was so excited about my Joe Torre book that I just, I'm just about finished with Mariano Rivera's book, The Closer, which is, I recommend to anybody. Really? What an amazing, heartwarming story of a guy that was nothing but a poor fisherman from Panama. Wow. You know, and how he never, ever got too big for his britches, so mm-hmm. to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a heartwarming one. There's there's so many lessons there, but it's not. I, I promise I won't do podcasts on that Because <laughs> I got a bunch of other stuff. With all my notes from my three mm-hmm. days of, of Maxwell training, yeah, I got enough content for a year. I just got to go back and refresh myself on my notes. Uh, so we're re- we're renewing for another season then. We are. <laughs> We're lined up for season four. Or something. <laughs> but I'm not sure which one we're going to use next week. So I'm not going to okay. tell anybody because I got a few of them bouncing around. But I do. I just want to remind people Live to Lead is going to be amazing. You, Wherever you're listening to this podcast, if you're, li- if you're one of our listeners in Spain, you know, we're going to put a link in mm-hmm. the description for you to register to Live to Lead because it's virtual for It is virtual for anyone this year. Mm -hmm. They're still doing the live event in Atlanta on October 9th, but we will be able to offer that to you virtually at a discount from anybody else. Um, You know, Mm -hmm. you can, you can sign up and you can get it for 79 bucks. Yeah. I'm really, I'm I'm really excited about it. I think um, it's one thing to say, oh, it's, you know, it's a virtual event this year. No, like it's a virtual experience. You know, there's, that's great. Yes. There's going to be like chats going on. There's going to be um, a session afterward with you. With me. Yeah. A breakout with me afterwards. Right. And um, there's like bonus material. There's all kinds of things um, that we didn't have access to. In right. previous years. And, right. um, you know, like this is the circumstance where we're in this year. But there are, I think there's some really great things. We've broken down geographical barriers. The cost has, yes. we've been able to decrease the cost significantly. Dramatically reduce the cost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, you know, the flexibility to attend from, from anywhere, whenever, anywhere to in the world. watch replays, to yep. um, to catch up on some additional bonus footage. Right. I think it, it's uh, it's really exciting, and I'm I'm yeah. excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. What I really like, Marissa, is that, that the folks that wa- that that buy a ticket will have access to the materials for a full seventy two hours. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, once Live to Lead was done, you couldn't watch it again. Right. You know, um, and now you can for a set for three days, which is mm-hmm. really super. So we're going to talk about it every week mm-hmm. between now and October 9th. But really, people need to take advantage of it. It is. It's going to be my sixth live to lead, and every year I walk away so filled to overflowing with with ideas and encouragement and and actionable things you can do to make to accelerate your growth journey. And great speakers, I can't wait. Alan Mulally, Cat Cole, mm-hmm. um, Steve is Steve it? Harvey, Steve Harvey, yes, yeah. and Greg Groeschel, um, former NFL player. Um, it's going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. So, any any special plans for the weekend? No, not really. Just uh, okay. Things are winding down with summer. Summer's and winding down. My yeah. girls are um, looking forward to what they are calling spooky season. Oh, that's right. You know, I thought of your girls as I went into Lowe's the other night, <laughs> and spooky season was all over the front of the store. Yes, yes. And this year, there I just learned yesterday of um, a new event that's being put on by the the lights on the lake people and the fright nights people mm. they're doing like a drive through um kind of it's reminds me a lot of like the format of lights on the lake but it's at Jamesville Beach and okay. um i i already bought our ticket for the you stay in your car so you don't have to worry about masks or full anything social distancing. like that full social distancing you stay in your own car and you go through and um they're going to love it they are Great. they're going to love that yeah Super. Can't wait. All right. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page. <laughs>